So we're joined by, by Johnny Locri. So Johnny, I just want to thank you very, very much for com coming here. And I suppose following on from last uh, our last um, episode along with, just, with Jason Quigley where he gave us a number of uh, good tips on, on preparation. We're going to follow that on now. You're going to give us a number of, of, of kind of key tips or, or key pointers in terms of uh, you know helping people prepare for the upcoming maybe Donegal Marathon and the, the 5K and 10K series that are, that, are, that are happening all around us here in the summer. So. As I say, we'll, we'll get rattled through them and we'll, yeah. we'll try and get, help people out as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. so kind of following on from what Jason would have talked about, I think the key in terms of physiotherapy, both in injury prevention and in maximising performance and just enjoying it, is just doing the simple things right. So a couple of key points um, in terms of the physio stuff, up to 80% of injuries, running injuries that, that are caused, um, lead back to some kind of programming issues. So. I think one of the keys is getting yourself a coach um, or someone knowledgeable in terms of programming and helping them to structure structure your, your programming. Um, like you would know from, from Donegal training, obviously you can't train hard all the time um, or your body will just break down. Yeah. Same with, with running injuries. So like the some of the best 5K runners in the world will run 5Ks very seldom, okay, about 90 plus percent of their training is focused on different um, distances different speeds um, and fluctuations and, and intensity and, and volume and stuff like that. So um, getting someone who knows what to do and, and kind of structure in a program is really yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Massively yeah. important. Yeah. I suppose yeah. that is a key, key ingredient. I suppose we can tend to go out and want to go as hard as we can every uh, single night. And um, we're all good I that. think the uh, important thing now is trying to, the whole buzzword out there at the moment is recovery and trying to recover yeah. as best yeah. we can from, from various uh, sessions. So as I say, that's a very, very key point, definitely. Uh, so I think the... The other thing as well, like aside from the programming, like you were just mentioning there, if you're if you're under recovering, so if you're not recovering well enough in terms of your sleep, um, or your nutrition, then then your your performance is gonna gonna decrease and the likelihood of injury increases. In terms of sleep, I would recommend about eight and a half hours per per night would be a good thing. Um, try not to substitute your eight and a half hours by maybe getting six or seven and trying to get a power nap because studies have shown that that power nap's not as beneficial. So eight and a half good solid hours at night is, is the way to go. Um, nutrition, get into contact with a nutritionist um, or someone who can kind of steer you in the right direction, making sure you're getting all the, the good nutrients into the body and fueling, fueling things well as well. Very good. Uh, yeah. Again, key the nutritional element of it. I think people yeah. can, can yeah. I suppose, can really try and make the nutrition element very complex. I think it's again, like what Jason was on about, to keep things very, very simple. Yeah. And look at it, I suppose, in the form of, of how to fuel, fuel a car properly, getting the significant amounts of protein in to help the, yeah. the muscles recover yeah. and, and even maybe grow stronger. And then also the, the carbohydrates that are, that are needed in terms of trying to yeah. give you that little bit yeah. of energy. Yeah, and it's the simple things. It's like you don't need to spend a lot of money on supplements. It's just getting your, your basic um, ingredients in and just eating healthy, eating clean food. That's, that's the main thing. Um, the other thing in terms of injury prevention and maximizing performance is going to be strength work. Um, most kind of importantly would be even looking at the issues around the foot, um, ankle, Achilles, knee is going to be maximizing hip strength. So a lot of the time whenever someone comes through the door with an injury kind of anywhere in the lower limb, one of the first areas that we kind of zone in on is the hip, um, making sure the muscles at the back of the hip, outside of the hip, inside of the hip are strong enough to, to kind of improve your, your mechanics when you're running. Um, the more research shows the more rotational forces you have in your upper body or lower body, so the more twisting and turning you see people doing, yeah. the more energy they're wasting in that way. Yeah. Um, so they want to be trying to focus on getting as much energy into forward motion as they can with kind of as little rotational it's stuff going on as they can. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose yeah. the number of maybe key running injuries that you might come across now, you know, you think about it, road running is bound to be sore for maybe the average person like myself who looks upon road running you think it's bound to be very very sore in the joints and the bodies and tightnesses and maybe people get injuries around the Achilles, yeah. ankles, hamstrings, yeah. you know quads I suppose a bit of advice in terms to overcoming those or trying to get yeah. them stronger. Like one, of the, yeah, one of the key things is just that you know there's no best way to run so kind of there's no one size fits all and um, whenever we're looking at running analysis in the clinic um, and doing the run well stuff we tend to focus in as would yourself doing the, the gate stuff here in, in the shop. Um, it's really looking at the way someone runs and then looking to make minor changes to it to see if we can offload certain structures or place more pressure in, on other structures that, that are able to take the, the workload. Whenever we're thinking about running injuries, 
Um, the most common type of run injury we'd see through the door are knees. So yeah. coming up to the Donegal Marathon, we'd see loads of people complaining of niggles in around the knee joint. Um, the easiest way to offload the knee joint is to do something um, with your cadence. So cadence is just how many steps you take per minute. Um, and if we can change your cadence and increase it by about 10%, then research has shown that you take about 14% pressure off the knee. Okay. So say if someone's dealing with a little niggle in around the knee joint, if we can alter their cadence and make them run taking more steps per minute, um, some runners find that that just clears up their symptoms straight away and they can they can continue yeah, on. Very ambitious with cadence, yeah. I mean actually yeah. shorten straight or take less. Yeah. less or the easiest way to do it because um, things can be overcomplicated as well. So I tend to tell people just to relax into it. And the easiest thing is if they use, we have a free app on the mobile phone and um, we can put down a link to it. It's called Tap Tempo. Okay. Um, and you can check your cadence using Tap Tempo or a digital metronome. And then what they can do is they plug in or type in whatever cadence it is that they want to use on, on the metronome. Um, and they just use it and it'll give them a beep. So every time the metronome beeps, they just focus on taking a step. And they don't have to use it all the time. If you use it for two or three minutes at the beginning of a run, um, or when you're starting to kind of get fatigued, yeah. then it keeps you just back on track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Um, so that's probably probably the easiest way to do it. Um, and a lot of people, you know, will say, "Oh, I, I don't think I can change my running technique. It's too difficult." But you'd know yourself even from golfing. If you yeah. get, you know, a couple of little lessons and tweak your your swing here and there, it makes a, a massive difference. Yeah, just getting something small. Reminder: I think a lot of yeah. us can. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for help, you get bamboozled with yeah. you know, 8, 10, 12 key points and you just end up just bamboozling yeah. yourself and getting confused and getting quite scared. Yeah. Whereas I think with yourself, with what you're speaking about there, or in terms of getting a golf tip or a golf lesson, you just keep it very simple, one point each day and trying to improve it ever so gradually and ever so slowly and make small changes that can make a it can end up making a making a massive difference and a massive change to, to behaviour, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I suppose that's probably the biggest thing, just to summarize it again, would be, you know, focusing on getting getting help or a structured program off someone that involves, you know, easy runs, hard runs, um, and getting kind of every element in, making sure you get all your good food in to fuel the body and, and kind of assist in the recovery process, um, eight and a half hours sleep every night, um, factoring in rest days where, where appropriate, and then just in terms of your running technique, the best advice I could give someone if they were looking to change anything would be just um, to maybe think about altering their cadence a slight bit, particularly if they're starting to feel anything in around the, the knee. Excellent. Thanks yeah. a million, John. Well, again, I think that's nice, simple, clear, clean advice. Um, I think that could help people massively. Um, yeah. As I say, making them small, small changes can help people, I suppose, improve yeah. performance is what they want to do and, and minimize the, the, the likelihood and chances of an injury and recurring injury. So, um, thanks a million for coming on yeah. here today. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. And um, as I say, no doubt people will be coming on to, to, to get themselves checked out. Yeah, good. Thanks, Michael. Right.